Hey, what's uh, up, guys? We have a great question from Graham here. Is yeah, there such thing as too that. much power? Ooh, that's I a like good that. one. I did a yeah. video on that. I mean, what do you guys think? What do you think, Mr. Video Man? I did, did one called, you know, is, is there such thing as overkill? And pretty much the premise behind that video is I would rather have too much power than not enough. Because if you have not, if you don't have enough power and you're driving, especially in a, in a home theater uh, setup or even in a two channel setup and you hit those low impedance, you know, dips from like big bass notes, it's going to really, really tax that amplifier. And when that amp amplifier kind of gets taxed and it gets, you know, it's draining those resources, you're going to get into um, distortion and you could could possibly get into clipping. And if you start clipping your speakers, you're going to toast them quick. And the last thing you want to be doing is, you know, damaging your speakers. And so I would rather have too much, um, you know, and there's different rules of, of thumb. Probably a good rule of thumb is just double. You know, if your speakers can handle 100 watts, there is no problem sending them or, you know, pairing them up with an amplifier that's 200 watts per channel. So, yeah, I have, a, I, have a, I have a thing on that. And I would yeah. say, you know, typically what they say is exactly what you're saying is, you know, it's those square waves that really blow a speaker up. Right. Mm -hmm. So you can have a 51 amp and you can you can fry a speaker if you're sending it pure distortion. Yeah. Right. Garbage. Yep. It's yep. totally uh, possible. And what I would say is you can get a more powerful amplifier. Right. Like you can get as much power as you want. Right. Even if your your speakers say only 100 watts and you can have one that's 500 watts per channel. But you better know what to look for when the speaker is actually reaching its mechanical limits. And so, right. what I would say is, you know, you can you can play uh, audible distortion. Let's say the amplifier is not powerful enough or it's not good wattage, and you'll hear that right away, right? So when you hear your speaker sound kind of like, you know, you everybody knows the sound of uh, distortion when you've turned it up too high. But the thing is, a lot of people might not know the symptoms or the the signals to let you know that the speaker can't handle it. So if your amplifier is like more than capable enough, but your speakers start to hit their limit. So a few things, you, and they're all bad things, right? <laughs> so here's when you know your speaker's about to blow up, right? You start smelling smoke, you <laughs> smell something funny, that's not good. That's the, the not voice good. coil is burning up, right? Yeah. It's too hot, Can't it can't dissipate the heat fast enough. Uh, when it bottoms out, so the voice coil hitting the bottom mm -hmm. of the motor structure, mm -hmm. that's a bad sound. You, it, once there's you also that, there's also the other end where like the spider is <laughs> hitting the dust cap on the front yeah, yeah, you get some of those going <laughs> like, that's no good those I are bad very really, bad things really, um, it doesn't um, sound natural what you're like, doing <laughs> you can only <laughs> handle it can only handle those for like who knows if it hits it depends on how hard it hits that uh the bottom of the motor structure but it could dent that you know so the voice call is supposed to be nice and round and so if it starts getting like bent then it's going to start rubbing against the side of the the magnet and so that'll that'll mess it up even further so you have to know what you're doing out in that case i would say i would rather have audible distortion if you don't know what you're doing right because once you get more experience you start realizing like oh this speaker is starting to hit its mechanical limits you can kind of hear it giving yeah. you hints mm -hmm. it's like Look at that. Look at that. Wolfer is kind of going a little, it's going pretty far. It looks like it's about to like pop off of this speaker. Right. And, and you see it reaching the X max, which is as far out as that woofer can go. And that's just the woofer. How do you know what the, the tweeter can handle? You don't really see anything. Right. right. So that might blow and you just don't even know it. Yeah. Um, so you have to be more careful. So I would say get, you know, the safest bet is get something around what it's rated for. Right. And if it's much more powerful, be careful. I think the thing too that people sometimes people don't realize is you know they buy a 200 watt amplifier and they think that okay when I turn this thing on and I'm watching a movie I mean it's just feeding nonstop 200 watts you know All so the there's time. just a, that thought and so that's not the case I mean most of the time and again depending on the the level of sensitivity of your speakers you may only be feeding it. 10 watts or 20 watts or 50 watts, you know, and it's only during some of those major massive peaks that it'll just kind of have that burst of power and then it'll right. just pull back. Like going from a quiet scene to all of, all of a sudden explosion yeah. somewhere. Yeah. yeah. So, 
Yeah, True. if you ever see the little Macintosh, you know, they got the little needle and they're cranking some music, man. It's like 10 watts. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Everybody needs one of those. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody needs two. <laughs> <laughs>